नमस्कार यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम टू द प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ द न्यू लाइसियम फॉर इंग्लिश लिटरेचर इन द सीरीज ऑफ लिटररी क्रिटिसिजम टूडेज लेक्चर इज ऑन थॉमस डिक्वेंसी एंड हिज टू कंसेप्ट फर्स्ट वन द डिविजन ऑफ लिटरेचर लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज एंड लिटरेचर ऑफ पावर एंड सेकेंड वन इज ऑन हिज शेक्सपीरियन एसे ऑन हिज क्रिटिसिजम ऑफ शेक्सपीरियन प्ले मैकबेद on the knocking at the gate of macbeth thomas de quincy is a romantic critic romantic essayist and his essays were generally published in his uh, in magazines like uh, london magazine and uh, quarterly review in one of his essay that was uh, published in 1848 on the poetry of alexander pope he bifurcated literature into two parts literature of knowledge and literature of power but before 1848 when the essay on alexander pope was published he had already conceived the idea of uh, this these two types of literature in his 1823 essay that was published in london magazine under the title letters to a young man whose education has been neglected letters to a young man whose education has been neglected number 3 london magazine march 1823 this was the reference of the essay where he divided literature first into literature of knowledge and literature of power what do you mean by knowledge knowledge the term has totally changed its connotation from the 18th century to the 21st century today knowledge has different connotation and during the 18th and 19th century knowledge was equivalent to science so he divides literature in fact into literature of science and literature of power right literature of science deals with facts and literature of power has the capacity to मूव ऑल राइट इसी को बाद में आइए रिचर्ड्स ने डिवाइड किया देर आर टू यूसेज ऑफ लैंग्वेज राइट टू यूसेज ऑफ लैंग्वेज साइंटिफिक यूज ऑफ लैंग्वेज एंड इमोटिव यूज ऑफ लैंग्वेज ये आइए रिचर्ड्स की थियोरी थी राइट और अकॉर्डिंग टू टॉमस डिक्वेंसी लिटरेचर इज डिवाइडेड इन टू टू पार्ट लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज एंड लिटरेचर ऑफ पावर लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज अ वर्ड in the 18th century was synonymous with science and that in dequencies time dequencies day it hadn't yet drifted from its 18th century connotation from the connotation of science the function of literature the function of literature of knowledge according to thomas de quincy is to instruct right is to instruct means the function of literature of knowledge is to teach only and the function of literature of power is to move right so remember these two differences literature of knowledge means literature that teaches something or literature of power means literature that moves you to do something extraordinary to do something progressive to go somewhere in advancement that is literature of power here i have given you a picture of shrimad bhagavad gita and gita was the text gita is the text in fact that has the potential to move you to move me and it has moved arjuna when he was in the kurukshetra so this is the permanency of literature literature of power is permanent it is for forever literature of power has the eternity it never come in, it never comes to an end it never closes but when we talk about facts facts keep on changing suppose that aaj hum jis camera ke samne aapko padha rahe hain kuch din ke baad iska ek naya version aa jayega this will be outdated and the new camera will take place right steam engine kabhi hua karte tha and today you see the engine of bande bharat the bullet train so ye fact hai fact keeps on changing but the literature ha literature of power the literature of power especially the divine literature the scripture khas karke gita 
मिल्टन की द पैराडाइज लास्ट ये ऐसे टेक्स्ट है जो स्टिल रेलिवेंट है जो डिवाइन लिटरेचर है इट स्टिल मोटिवेट अस हमको अभी भी मोटिवेट करते हैं हमको अभी भी इंस्पायर करते हैं और दे विल कीप ऑन इंस्पायरिंग अस थ्रू इटर्निटी दिस इज द पावर ऑफ लिटरेचर एंड पावर ऑफ लिटरेचर में लिटरेचर ऑफ पावर की ये पावर होती है ऑल राइट द फर्स्ट मीन्स लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज speaks to the mere discursive understanding the second means literature of power speaks ultimately it may happen to the higher understanding or reason literature of power is of higher understanding literature of knowledge is of lower understanding all right clear hai na bilkul point remotely it may travel towards an object seated in what lord bacon calls dry light but proximately it does and must operate else it ceases to be literature of power on and through that humid light which clothes itself in the mists and glittering arrays of human passions desires and genial emotions men have so little reflected on higher function of literature as to find it a paradox if one should describe it as a mean or subordinate purpose of the book to give information but this is a paradox only in the sense which makes it honorable to be paradoxical whenever we talk in ordinary language of seeking knowledge we understand the words as connected with something of a absolute novelty but it is the grandeur of all truth which can occupy a very high place in human interest that it is never absolutely novel to the meanest of minds it exists eternally by way of germ or latent principle in the lowest as in the highest needing to be developed but never to be planted all right to be capable of transplantation is the immediate criterion of truth raised on a lower scale besides which there is rarer thing than truth namely power or deep sympathy with truth what is the effect for instance upon society of children by the pity the tenderness and by the peculiar modes of admiration which connect themselves with the happiness with the innocence and with the simplicity of children not only are the primal affection strengthened and continually renewed but the qualities which are the dearest in the sight of heaven literature of power what thomas de quincy mentions in literature of power here he gives the example of john milton john milton was not a simple writer john milton has the potential to move and milton himself was moved by the story of adam and eve that he found in the genesis what you wrote to milton is not any knowledge of which a million separate items are still but a million of advancing steps on the same earthly level what you owe is power that is exercise and expansion to your own latent capacity of sympathy with the infinite where every pulse and each separate influx is a step upwards a step ascending as upon a jacob's ladder from earth to mysterious altitudes above the earth all the steps of knowledge from first to last carry you further on the same plane but could never raise you one foot above you ancient level of earth whereas the very first step in power is a flight right the basic purpose of literature of power is to make you have to build wings in you so that you could fly you could take a flight this is the purpose of literature of power and milton has the capacity milton has the ability to write a literature that could 
मूव यू राइट ही गिव द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सर इज एक न्यूटन न्यूटन वर्क एज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज राइट द वेरी हाइएस्ट वर्क दैट हैज एवर एग्जिस्टेड इन द लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज इज बट अ प्रोविजनल वर्क अ बुक अपॉन ट्रायल एंड सफरेंस एंड Comedy Benny D. Jesserty. It is a phrase later taken from Latin, and it is a phrase generally used by the lawmakers, by the justice, and uh, you are supposed to be in a place at a place till you behave well. जब तक आप बहुत अच्छा व्यवहार करते हो, मतलब the relevance of the book तभी तक है जब तक कोई नई book उसके आगे नहीं आ जाती है. Let's let its teaching be. Even partially revised, let it be out, but expanded. Even let its teaching be put a be, but placed in a better order, and instantly it is suppressed. As uh, this book is relevant, as long as new book arrives, जैसे दूसरी नई बुक आती है, तुरंत इसका रेलिवेंस खत्म हो जाता है. This is the literature of knowledge, right? literature of knowledge versus literature of power all the literature of knowledge builds only ground nets ground nets that are swept away by flood baad aati hai aur usi ke sath wo beh jata hai are confounded by the flow but the literature of power builds nests in aerial altitudes aerial altitudes of temples sacred from violation or of forests inaccessible to fraud just yahan ek aur cheez samajhiyega jo literature of knowledge hai that is earthy the literature of power jo hai that is airy right airy and earthy ka difference hai whatever is on earth it can be taken away with the swept of water right when the flood comes it takes everything away when the fire ignites it can burn anything but when we talk about power literature of power it is above the earth it is above the ground and once it is above the ground it cannot be victimized either by flood or by fire this is a great prerogative of the power literature and it is a greater which lies in the mode of its influence the knowledge literature like the fashion of this world पासेज अवे जैसे फैशन बदलता रहता है राइट right? पहले लोग क्या पहनते थे हर साल बदल जाता है वैसे लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज है इट कीप्स ऑन चेंजिंग इट डजेंट हैव एनी परमानेंसी इट डजेंट हैव एनी क्लास बट जो लिटरेचर ऑफ पावर है इट हैज अ क्लास इट हैज परमानेंसी इट हैज इटर्निटी इट हैज एवर लास्टिंगनेस दिस इज लिटरेचर ऑफ नॉलेज इनसाइक्लोपीडिया an encyclopedia is its abstract and in this respect it may be taken for its speaking symbol right literature of power for the very same reason that it is so much more durable than the literature of knowledge is more intense and electrically searching in its impressions right literature of knowledge doesn't have durability literature of power is very much durable all right so this was the concept of literature of power and literature of knowledge as was suggested by told by thomas de quincy one has the power to move one has the power one doesn't have even any power literature of knowledge is earthy literature of power is airy literature of knowledge is uh, found on earth it is like the nest made on the ground a literature of uh, power has its wings right it keeps on fly right literature of knowledge deals with facts and literature of uh, power doesn't deal with facts even it deals with imagination which one is superior obviously literature of knowledge is inferior to literature of power all right these were the differences between literature of power and literature of knowledge and according to uh, mr thomas de quincy milton is the best example a paradise lost is the best example of literature of power though he also talks about jeffrey chaucer he mentions uh, william shakespeare's plays right do they are literature of power and he mentions is that newton's work that is literature of knowledge that is only facts literature of knowledge can be surpassed a literature of knowledge is like the fashion 
it keeps on changing it keeps on passing but literature of power has permanence value it never changes all right the second one that uh, is important thomas de quincy ka essay on the knocking at the gate in macbeth on the knocking at the gate in macbeth i hope you remember when the gate was knocked in macbeth after the murder of duncan when duncan was murdered by macbeth everything was silent and to break the silence the dramatist shakespeare introduces two characters and these two characters knock the gate of macbeth that is on the knocking at the gate in macbeth all right topic is clear na on the knocking at the gate in macbeth after the death of after the murder of duncan two characters come and they knock the gate of macbeth so they break the silence they break the silence silence that was between uh, that was that come after the death of king duncan usko break karne ka ek wo tarika hai wo ye scene ha on the knocking at the gate in macbeth on the knocking at the gate in macbeth by de quincy published in 1823 in london magazine on the gate at macbeth was first published same cheez hai in october 1823 as an item in de quincy's series of notes from the pocket book of late opium eater right uh, ek series chhap rahi thi inke publication ki aur naam tha uska notes from the pocket book of a late opium eater he himself was an opium eater and once he wrote an essay confession of an opium eater so he had stopped eating opium now and then he wrote the essay right he started writing the series of essays on uh, jaha in the london magazine right the essay concerns act 2 scene 3 in the tragedy of macbeth in which the murder of king duncan by macbeth and lady macbeth is succeeded by macduff and lennox macduff and lennox are these two characters who knock the gate of macbeth after the murder of king duncan and the essay is related to that topic only and just after the murder after uh, these two knockers go एक नई सीन शुरू होती है जिसको आप पोर्टर सीन कहते हो तो वट इज पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू हियर डिक्वेंसिस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू हियर इज दैट आप हमेशा मर्डर्ड के साथ सिंपथेटिक नहीं हुई है राइट यू शुड हैव अंडरस्टैंड द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ द मर्डर पॉइंट नंबर वन पॉइंट नंबर टू जिस पर वो फोकस करते हैं वो ये है कि इट इज शेक्सपियर who introduces the characters beautifully to break the silence point number 3 understanding is not as much valuable as emotion right dramatist murderer should be judged on the sympathetic ground because he was a, a romantic critic and being a romantic critic his main focus was on emotion the dramatist should be judged on the ground of emotions right being a romantic era writer and valued he valued emotion and intuition over logic and reason this was the point he believed in intuition so he discarded the logic behind the murder and he implores his reader to abandon their understanding because it is based on inaccurate understanding is based and inaccurate then what is above the base that is not understanding that is observation and there must be difference between observation and understanding he encourages his readers to distrust their comprehension apni comprehension ko chhodiye and understanding ko chhodiye and instead trust in their instinct trust in their emotions trust in the voice of soul dil ki awaaz suniye observations play a vital role in interpreting the world understanding is not enough observation is enough there should not be only an emotional or sympathetic connection with the victims ho sakta hai victim nahi aisa kuch kiya ho ki usko sath aaj aisa ho raha hai to aap aksar yahi hota hai ki hum jo victim hota hai 
उसके पार्ट में जाकर के सोचने लगते हैं हमेशा नहीं सोचना चाहिए हमें दूसरे का पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू भी लेना चाहिए यही स्टेटमेंट था टॉमस डिक्वेंसी का इट वुड बी वर्गर इफ अ पोएट ओनली इवोक्ड सिंपैथी फॉर द विक्टिम बिकॉज डेथ इज डिग्रेडिंग सिर्फ ये ना सोचे कि डेथ हुई है इसलिए विक्टिम जो है वो निर्दोष है डिक्वेंसी डिफाइन सिंपैथी एज द एबिलिटी टू रिक्रिएट फीलिंग इन द माइंड वॉट इज सिंपैथी सिंपैथी इज द एबिलिटी किस चीज की एबिलिटी है टू रिक्रिएट क्या रिक्रिएट करती है फीलिंग कहां पे इन द माइंड द ऑडियंस मस्ट शेयर एन इमोशनल रिस्पॉन्स विद द मर्डर बट डज नॉट हैव टू फील पिटी फॉर द मर्डर हमेशा पिटी फील करने की जरूरत नहीं है ऑब्जर्वेशन इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट दैन एनीथिंग एल्स तो दिस वॉज द व्यू राइट इंस्टिंक्शन इज मोर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉलो यूर इंस्टिंग डू नॉट फॉलो योर लॉजिक डू नॉट फॉलो योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग बिलीव इन इमोशंस बिलीव इन इंस्टिंग बिलीव इन ऑब्जर्वेशन राइट ये पॉइंट था डिक्वेंसी पॉजिस इज एनालिसिस एंड इम्प्लोर्स द रीडर टू डिस रिगार्ड लॉजिक एंड नॉलेज एट दिस पॉइंट ही आर्ग्यूज दैट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज द लोवेस्ट फंक्शन ऑफ ह्यूमन माइंड Even though many people rely on understanding to navigate the world, right? आप कहते हो मैं तो इस चीज को जानता हूं but जब आप फिर से उस पर लुकअप करते हो तो टोटल मामला अलग हो जाता है Dickensy notes that people rely too heavily on understanding and logic even when they feel conflicting emotions or observations, right? उस conflicting emotions और ऑब्जर्वेशन से बचना है आंटी क्विंसी गिव्स द एग्जाम्पल दैट एक अनट्रेंड पर्सन है कोई एंड अनट्रेंड पर्सन विल इन करेक्टली ड्रॉ सिंपल शेप्स एंड प्रस्पेक्टिव सच एज वॉल्स एट दी राइट एंगल मुझे कोई कह दे कि एंगल बना दीजिए राइट एंगल मैं नहीं बना सकता आई एम अनट्रेंड दो समझता हूं कि क्या होता है वो बट अनट्रेंड होने की वजह से वो काम मैं नहीं कर सकता डिक्वेंसी इसी बात को एक्सप्लेन करते हुए कहते हैं कि दिस टास्क इज डिफिकल्ट फॉर द अनट्रेन ऑब्जर्वर बिकॉज क्यों है दे रिलाई ऑन दियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग नॉट ऑन दियर ऑब्जर्वेशन और एक्सपीरियंस अंडरस्टैंडिंग तो है ऑब्जर्वेशन और एक्सपीरियंस नहीं है ही म्यूज इज दैट द पर्सन विल इनकरेक्टली ड्रॉ होराइजेंटल एंड परपेंडिकुलर लाइन्स बिकॉज दे लॉजिकली अंडरस्टैंड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ राइट एंगल डिक्वेंसी पॉइंट आउट दैट इवन दो दईज ऑब्जर्व अ डिफरेंट शेप द पर्सन विल इग्नोर वॉट दे ऑब्जर्व इन फेवर ऑफ लॉजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन और लॉजिकल इंटरप्रिटेशन जो है दैट इज नॉट ओके दैट इज नॉट गुड इन द व्यूज ऑफ टॉमस डिक्वेंसी राइट हमेशा वो ठीक नहीं होती है इसलिए हमको क्या करना चाहिए वी शुड फॉलो आवर इंस्टिंग right dequency returns the readers attention to macbeth as the effect the knocking at the gate stayed within him dequency ka manna ye hai ki the logic states that such a simple act should not evoke any kind of reaction within him but he understands that he did feel some emotion that is hard to describe he retells the story of a murderer who gruesomely killed a family right ek murderer ki story bhi dete hain aur jisne ek puri family ko hi maar diya tha just as he finished the murder there was a knock at the front door similar to what macbeth experienced after murdering duncan ye live example unhone diya hai an acquaintance told the quincy about the murder and described the unsettling jolt he felt when he read about the knock at the front door dequency feels validated that he followed his feelings and did not dismiss his emotional response to the knock at the gate of macbeth as insignificant so i hope you would have understood the main point what dequency was trying to say and what i am trying to convey right the message was given by dequency and i am just trying to conveying the message instinct is more important rather than rather than logic rather than instinct right our instinct is more important rather than logic right
the quincy recreates the scene of uh, the knocking at the gate in macbeth that then he returns to the scene in macbeth he recalls kya recall karte hain that macbeth and lady macbeth have just murdered duncan the murder has transfigured them into evil people right after the murder they have become evil persons and time stands still when they are transformed the evil have committed cuts them off from humanity and the pity of the audience de quincy here reveals that shakespeare must do something so that macbeth and the audience re enter the time and uh, this knocking at the gate was an instrument was a technique to re enter the time to break the ice to break the silence the murder had separated macbeth from humanity shakespeare has to bring them back from their isolation so that the audience can understand their transformation usko audience jo hai transformation ko samajh sake yahi pura पर्पज था टॉमस डी क्विंसी का राइट शेक्सपियर का डी क्विंसी से दैट नॉकिंग एट द गेट जॉल्स आज है क्या काम करती है नॉकिंग एट द गेट इज वॉट जॉल्स द करेक्टर्स एंड ऑडियंस बैक टू रियालिटी जैसे नॉकिंग होती है साइलेंस ब्रेक करता है एंड ऑडियंस रियलाइज दैट दे आर वॉचिंग द प्ले एंड मैकबेथ एंड लेडी मैकबेथ रियलाइज दैट दे हैव Return to the world of humanity. ये purpose है knocking का The murder temporarily suspends time as they cross the point of no return from innocence into evil. All right. The Quincy concludes the audience feels the abrupt return to life and is aware that they have just witnessed time standing still for Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. The Quincy concludes by praising. Shakespeare's talents he says Shakespeare's works are more than great works of art he says they are a force of nature and the more people read them the more they discover about their humanity this was the main content this was the main message of de quincy all right all right then all right thank you so much here are a few suggestions for you watch like suggest to your friends share and then subscribe to your channel the new lyceum for english literature i'll be grateful to you and uh, if you subscribe if you like if you comment then i feel motivated to make the next lecture thank you so much i hope you will do it thank you so much good luck jai hind bye bye